Good evening. It's Pastor Jennifer and it is Wednesday Warfare. We are going to pray for victory in your life tonight and we are going to believe for the miraculous. So I'm very excited that um, we have this time together for Wednesday Prayer Online. So many of you write in and share your testimonies, and then you share your praise reports, and then you share your prayer request. So as you're jumping on, say hello in the chat as we would. Hi, Shirley. Buona sera. <laughs> Come va? Tutto bene? Uh, we're so happy that um, so many of our friends join us every Wednesday, and we believe for the miraculous. So. As you're jumping on, say hello in the chat. It's like you would be walking into the church and you're greeting each other and you're saying, hi, how was your day at work? Um, so happy to see you tonight. And uh, hi, Jenny, I'm glad to see you too as well. I saw your pretty daughter earlier. Hi, Boriana and Shan, my faithful Shan. Happy to see you. Hi, Helen, all of ICF. Good evening, Nasha and Annalyn. Thank you for joining us. Um, Esther and Eunicia, woo! -hoo. Amen. Hi, Moonbe. Happy to see you. Well, it is Wednesday Warfare. Amen. And um, we're going to have some powerful times in prayer. Those of you that will be jumping on a little bit later, hi, Lewis and Shanta. Pastor Rick is still um, taking care of some things with his mother, and we continue to pray for wisdom for the family and for strength for her. Her faith is strong. Um, her body is fighting cancer, and we know that in the end, victory is going to be hers no matter what, but we're praying that the Lord would just intervene and give her great courage and great strength, which he is doing. We thank him for that. And um, so pr praise God for that. Hi, Steve and Melody and Bellin. Happy to see you. Um, hi, Beverly. Good to see you. Good evening. So while we are waiting for a few more people to join on, I would really love for you to type in the chat right now something that you are thanking God for this week. March, can you believe March is already March 10th? It's almost half, not quite half the month, one third of the month. And um, I mean, spring is in the air. The little rose pink flowers are blooming on the trees in Rome and the wind is kind of blowing in rains and spring showers and then some sunshine and the green parrots are flying outside making all kind of noise in the sunshine when we have sunshine so i'm thankful for spring i'm thankful for new life so uh yes we we were excited about that type in something that you are thankful for because you know as people look in the chat it means a lot when someone says oh I'm so glad they're thankful for that. I'm glad that the Lord is helping them. I want you to know that I'm thankful the Lord is just um, sustaining me and giving me just lots of encouragement in his word and feeling so strong. We have an awesome team of ministry workers and helpers at the church. And as we share with one another, um, I just feel re rejoicing and rejuvenated every Wednesday because we are a team and it's really wonderful. Lewis, yes, we thank God for technology. Amen. And uh, we don't take these opportunities lightly that we can come together. I want to encourage you that um, every new day, yes, Boriana, always remember that if we're not for some reason we weren't on facebook we would be on the live stream channel or the youtube channel um, and all of those things can be accessed from the website icfrome.org so those are very important yes steve we're going to share your testimony here in a little bit steve had a wonderful testimony in fact you can type it in the chat if you want to that would be fine or i will also mention it hi anuja um, so we're typing in what we're thankful for tonight, and I am thankful for God's strength, we're thankful for technology, and for the healing power that is at work. So I want you to do something with me, for family, yes, biological and spiritual, me too, I love my Christian family and my family across the world, it's really awesome. 
Um, I just want us to give God thanksgiving. If we were together, we'd have some pretty music playing. And uh, Facebook seems to always like block us when we put music on. And so we that's why we don't have music right now. Um, but I want us just to lift our hands for a moment right where you are, if you can. And I want you just to invite the strength of the word of God to really permeate every aspect of our prayer tonight. Can you do that with me? So Father, we invite you, I invite you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for this night. I thank you that you have answered prayers. Oh God, you have gone above and beyond what we could ask or imagine. You are walking with us. Your Holy Spirit is comforting those who need comfort and strengthening those who need strength. Oh God, you are the healer and we thank you, Lord. We give you this night. We thank you for the word of God that is our weapon. And God, I thank you that our worship is our weapon. And as we worship you, as we praise you, as we magnify your name, we are defeating the enemy. And that is what Wednesday warfare is about. It's that spiritual warfare where we don't fight like people fight. We see what's happening in the heavenlies and we know we're on a supernatural winning team. So we thank you, Lord, for that. And Lord, I thank you for every person who is joining on right now and thanking God for the things that, that the Lord has been doing for them. Hi, Magnifique. We miss you too. Awesome to see you. And uh, Sandra, good to see you. I'm glad you're here. I'm so proud of you for getting all your technology going. That's really awesome. So tonight, I have some really awesome scriptures, but I want to start with some thanksgiving. Steve Pettigord already wrote on there that um, he thanks God for his eyesight. And he wrote me today a powerful testimony of uh, how the Lord has just healed his eyes. And um, let me see here, Steve, I'm going to go right to it. He had been having a problem with vision in his left eye. Things were hazy and not clear. He has had detached retinas in both eyes and cataract surgery, and he had been praying about the problem. He found out that the lens that they implant sometimes had developed a film on it. He went to the eye doctor, found out this was the case. The eye doctor performed laser surgery on his left eye and praised God it took care of the problem. Amen. With new glasses, he is seeing 2020 in the left eye and 2025 in the right eye. So can somebody say we praise God for Steve's eyesight? We thank the Lord for that. Um, Jenny, I'm seeing your test your prayer request right now for her aunt who is in the hospital with pneumonia and high blood pressure. I praise God that our family always comes together in unity for prayer. So I want you to type in the chat, thank you God for healing Steve, because God is no respecter of purpose, of, of persons. Thank you God for healing Steve's eyes. And we thank you for that 2025 vision and that 2021, 20 vision. And Lord, we are also gonna agree for Jenny Rose and her, um, her aunt. Thank you. So, Lord, right now we pray for Jenny's aunt. God, we pray in Jesus' name that you would touch this aunt. We come against uh, blood pressure that is high. We pray that you'd heal these lungs, take away the pneumonia, take away the infection. Lord, we thank you that you are the healer, you are the deliverer, that no weapon formed will prosper. And so, Lord, as you healed Steve, uh, Steve's eyes, you're going to heal this aunt's lungs. And we thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank Thank you for healing Jenny's aunt. So powerful. Um, you know, the scripture says, in, and I did not send the scripture over to our team, um, but the scripture says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I want you to think about something in Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything. That is a command. It is not a suggestion. The Lord is saying, put it in my hands and do not fret or worry and cause it to interrupt your sleep. I have got this, the Lord is saying. But he says in everything with prayer 
and supplication. Supplication is like, oh God, please, we are in supplication to you. But that it's not what it says. It says supplication with thanksgiving. So what we're saying is, God, we thank you for healing Jenny Rose aunt. We thank you for touching our dear sister, Anna Cecilia. We have been praying for her. This is Shirley's friend. But God, we are in supplication for Anna Cecilia with thanksgiving that every week you are sustaining Anna Cecilia that is recovering. She is recovering from breast cancer in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed will prosper and that the child of God does not have to be anxious. And so we are decreeing and declaring scriptures. This is our warfare. Amen. The other scripture that I want to start us with is James 5, 14 and 16. It says, is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. If he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another. Pray for other people so you will be healed. That's what this scripture says. Therefore, the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. And so tonight, Lord, we thank you that we can call upon the elders and those who are elder in the faith and for our brothers and sisters around the world. We can agree that the prayers of the righteous will be very effective. And we are claiming that scripture. Now, another thing, I just found a wonderful new song. <clears throat> I don't remember the name right now, but it's talking about my hands are the weapon. So if you know how to put praise hands in the chat, I want you to understand this is what we do when we worship God, when we raise our hands in the sanctuary. And David said, we clap our hands and we dance before the Lord. And this song says, our praise is a weapon. Hi, Gina. Our praise is a weapon. This is Wednesday warfare. So we are going to give supplication with thanksgiving with praise. Put those praise hands in the chats and say, Lord, we thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I decree and declare that you are the God who heals, that you give peace that passes understanding. And I thank you for that, Lord. This is not about me and my problems. It is about you and your power to deliver, to heal, to sustain. And so, Lord, our hands are the weapons tonight, and they are worshiping God Almighty so that the name of the Lord, which is a strong tower, the righteous run to it, and they are saved in the name of Jesus. Thank you for that. I also want to give you tonight Psalm 37, and we've got several verses, basically 37, 1 through 40, but I've got a few different verses. 37, Psalm 37, it says, do not fret, do not worry. Here's a do not be anxious, do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. See that thing that's wrong, that thing that the enemy does, that's going to wither, that's going to go away. So don't fret about that. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. The Lord wants you to dwell in his presence. And when you do that, it's a safe pasture. I drive down a road every day when I come home from church and there are literally hundreds of sheep in a safe pasture. The cars are there, but there's a couple fences and different things. They are in a safe pasture pasture with their shepherd. And I'm always reminded that God knows every single one of us. He says to trust in the Lord and dwell in the land of safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So as we're praying tonight, I want you to say to the Lord, God, I don't want my desires. I want to take delight in your desires. As I take delight in the Lord, he gives me 
the desires of my heart as I commit my way to the Lord, as I trust in him. There's that word again that's the opposite of being fretting and anxious. As I trust in him, he will do this. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their schemes. Refrain from anger. Listen, the Lord is giving us words as we pray. We pray, oh God, I need your help in this. And God is saying, here's what I want you to decree and declare over that situation right now. Do not worry or fret over the schemes of the evil one, over the things that are happening, because the Lord will give you vindication. Be still before the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Here's that word again. Do not fret. Do not be anxious. Somebody needs to type that in the chat. The Lord is saying to you tonight, stop worrying. Stop fretting. Hi, Christine. Amen. He says, refrain from anger. You know, all this turmoil around all of our world, around situations that we just get weary in taking care of, can make us get angry about it. But the Lord is saying, turn from wrath. And here's that phrase again, do not fret. Do not fret. Somebody type do not fret and then some of my Italians type what it means in Italian. Do not fret. Do not worry. Do not worry. I want to see what somebody types for do not worry. <laughs> Angel. Ah, the Lord has said, di non affigerti. Amen? <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so do not fret because that only leads to you being the evil one. That only leads to you having an issue. Do not fret. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Are you needing provision? God says when you hope in the Lord, you will inherit it in the name of Jesus. Yes, angel, thank you. Non preoccuparti. Non preoccuparti. I will not. That's a little Texas accent, I know. A little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. For the power of the wicked will be broken. Right now, Lord, we pray for the power of the wicked one to be broken. Will you agree with me in prayer that the power of the enemy will be defeated? That the power of the wicked one will be broken? That the chains and the bondages and the strongholds of the enemy over people's minds, over their bodies, over their resources will be broken in the name of Jesus. And the Lord will uphold the right. So, Lord, we thank you that you are upholding those who are righteous in your eyes. We thank you that you are with us and we are not alone. We thank you that we are victorious. We thank you that in Psalm 37, I believe it's verse 17, says, The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. And though he may stumble, he will not fall. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. I was young. I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging bread. They were generous and lend freely. Their children will be a blessing. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. I want you to write in that chat right now, he will not forsake me. I want you to realize right now the Lord has not forsaken you. Whatever difficulty you may be going through, whatever turmoil you may be going through, however long this journey seems, ever, anybody ever do a road trip and you're like, I'm over the road trip, I want to be home? This says the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. So, Father, we, we stand upon this word in Psalm 37 that the wrongdoer, the wicked will perish and be destroyed and the righteous will inherit the land. The righteous will inherit the promise. You will not forsake us. And Lord, you will be with us and you will give us the promised land. What is the promised land? It's a place flowing with milk and honey. It's a place flowing with the peace of God. It's a place where God provides no matter what it looks like. Sometimes it could look like a desert with a beautiful oasis right in the middle of it. 
you know, I don't know about you, but if you've ever been in a spot where you felt dry and like you were in a desert and then suddenly the Holy Spirit comes and the spirit of the sovereign Lord descends upon us, the Lord does not forsake us. He comes to dwell among us and to be with us. So right now, Lord, you know the one who is in need. They are emotionally weary. They are mentally weak and tired. They're, they may be strong in their faith, but there are a lot of things taking energy from them. And so, Lord, I thank you that these verses in Psalm 37 remind us that there is hope in the Lord, that you keep your way and you promised us a land that that the wicked would be destroyed and we would see it. That the salvation, verse 39 and 40, the salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is our stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because he takes refuge in them. Right now, I believe that there are those that are worried about loved ones that maybe are hearing the voices of the wicked around them. You know, the voices of the wicked are on the internet. They're in, in the world at large. They're in the voices of influence. But this scripture says, the Lord delivers them from the wicked because they take refuge in him. Don't forget to remind yourself and those that you are encouraging, take refuge in the Lord. We don't always have to have the answer the do this, do A, B, C, D, E, F. Sometimes we just need to be reminded, take refuge in the Lord. Somebody take that. Take refuge in the Lord. Right now, Lord, I pray that we would take refuge in you. I pray that we can stand upon Psalm 37, that as we commit our ways to you, as we trust in you, as we fret not, that you would deliver us from the hand of the wicked. You would deliver us from the strongholds of evil. There is nothing that the enemy can do to the child of God because, God, you have promised us victory. We are ready for victory. You are our refuge in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you for that. Now, as we are praying as well, and you have a prayer request, I want you to put it in there. Um, different ones of you will begin to also help me with that as well. We are, I want to give you some more praise reports before we go to another portion of scripture that is going to be from Psalm 34 in just a moment. Um, but I want to tell you some things that we're thankful for. I am so thankful that this week, something that uh, had to do with income and salary and reimbursement, you know, that's what's supposed to happen with unemployment and all these things that are happening in the world when we can't work. Um, because someone began to ask, seek, and knock. Ask seek and knock. Ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. And you know what? The first couple no's were not the last to answer. The first couple no's may not be the last answer. And she knocked again and found out that the paperwork was not complete as she thought it was and sent the paperwork and they gave her everything all at one time into her bank account. Can somebody say praise Jehovah Jireh? He provides, he restores what something was taken away. God has returned it back. That's what he promises to do. And he is no respecter of persons. But you are a part of the answer to every prayer we pray. It may be that it's out of the confession of your mouth that you are decreeing and declaring. That's why we are doing Wednesday warfare with scripture so that it's not my words. It's not your words. It is the words of the Lord that we are standing upon. Amen. So God has done this and provided tremendously. We thank the Lord for healing Steve's eyes. Many of you, Steve had asked me also about our little friend Phoenix, who had a very bad uh, virus. And when she was uh, like, I think 10, maybe 11. And now she's 13. And she has just enough eyesight. The virus burned her from the inside out and she lost her eyesight except for one little eye. We have prayed for Phoenix numerous times on here, and I just saw a picture of her for her 13th birthday. And that one little eye is open, and she can see, and she can smile, and she's a 
she's just a beautiful little girl, knows exactly young lady. She's becoming a young lady. So can you say, God, thank you for continuing to heal Phoenix, for restoring her eyesight? Her mom wrote that this year, these past 12 months, Phoenix has had to have numerous visits to the operating room as they peel back and do cornea transplants, as they've done some stem cell transplant in her eyes. And in spite of COVID and all of the restrictions, can you believe Phoenix has not gotten sick? She's not had a fever. She's not had an infection after all these visits. And they leave their state where they live and they go to two or three other states that have certain kinds of medical centers. So we bless the Lord for touching Phoenix and he's not done. And she continues to stay strong in her faith as a 13 year old young lady. And we praise God for that. And we declare that we, the wicked one will be defeated and she will receive all of the promises that God has declared over her life in Jesus name. We thank him for that. I also want to thank you for, you prayed for Pastor Marty Bur Burroughs in Texas. He got COVID. Then they found out that he had a quadruple heart blockage and he was the first heart patient that they had done surgery on who had COVID. You know, they want people to get well before they do surgery, but they said it was life or death. They had to operate on his heart or he wouldn't make it. He is already out of the hospital. It hasn't even been two weeks, I don't think. Today or yesterday, he was at the property where he's building a new church with perfect coloring in his face and doing a video for his congregation saying this is the progress that's being made on the extended building that they're making there. So I thank God for healing Pastor Marty because he had COVID is why they found out about the heart blockage. He did have a heart attack, but it was while he was in the hospital and God is miraculously restoring Pastor Marty. So we praise God that in the midst of that turmoil, God was the refuge and God delivered him out of the trouble. And we thank the Lord for that. We have also been praying for Pastor Rich, a pastor in Michigan who has COVID and he had a double lung transplant. I want us to take a moment and pray for Pastor Rich right now in Michigan. Those new lungs have pneumonia and they have infection. So will you pray with me that Pastor Rich's body will be strong, that his wife, who is also a co-pastor with him, Linda, will be encouraged as his children and grandchildren in his church. Lord, we pray right now for Pastor Rich. We come against this pneumonia in these new lungs, Lord God. We pray that his body would hold on to these lungs. We pray that they would work and function as you designed them. We thank you, God, that he is responding. He's smiling. He's squeezing hands. He's giving symbols that he understands stands and he hears what's happening. Lord, we pray for his wife, Linda. May her heart, she is a woman of great tenacious faith. And Lord, I pray that you would keep her strong. You would surround her with people of victory, with voices of victory. And Lord, we just lift her up right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that you are doing that in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. We have prayed for Anna Cecilia, which is Shirley's friend. And we continue to lift her up and believe God to heal her and touch her. I also want to remind you as we go to the Lord in prayer, this is what I love even about our prayer time, our Wednesday warfare. It's not a place, it's a person. It's not a place, it's a person. It is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We do not seek a place. We do not seek a an address of a destination. It is a person that we seek. When we give our resources, we are not giving to a place, even though God says, bring them into your storehouse, which is your local church. And thank you for those that the online campus, this is your local church. But I want you to know it's not to a place. It's not to an address. It's to a person. It's to God the Father. When we pray, it is not a place that we're saying, God, touch that hospital. It's a person. God, 
son walk into that place. I am excited for what God is putting in my heart for ready for the trumpet and even ready to receive for the Easter month because I want you to know we're not looking at the place. Yes, the empty tomb is a powerful place. And yes, the empty cross is a powerful symbol, but it is not about a place. It is about the person of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And he is the one. He is the one. Raise those weapons right now. These are your praise hands. God, you, you are the one we worship. You are the one we adore. You are the one we declare is Lord over all. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Shama, our peace. You are Jehovah Shalom, our peace. You are Jehovah uh, Nisi, our banner, Lord, over our lives. You wave the banner. I am your God and you are my children. And those who take refuge in me, I will be with, says the Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you are touching these wonderful, wonderful people with the power of the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine? The Holy Spirit is not a place. It's a person, and it is a part of who God is. So right now, I want to encourage you. If you've been seeking the Holy Spirit, you've been seeking to have more of God, I want you to open your heart. If you have a prayer language, I want you to pray in your prayer language. If you're seeking more of the Holy Spirit, I want you to begin to pray in English or in your language, but then I want you to pray in those heavenly syllables that come to your mind. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. That is yielding our unruly tongue and saying, God, I don't know what to pray, but I know that in heaven, the angels know what to pray. The throne room is saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And so, Lord, we worship you right now. I pray in Jesus' name that you would saturate your children. God, that they would dwell in the land, the promised land, the land where milk and honey flows, the land where it's sweet and peaceful and there's there's rest in that land. God, we thank you. Holy Spirit, come. Let the Spirit Spirit of the sovereign Lord descend upon your children even right now God as we have decreed and declared the power of the Lord the worship of the Lord the God Almighty is in control God we don't see one another or hear one another but you hear the harmonies of your children raising that choir of song right now to the Lord I worship you. I adore you. I love you. I thank you, God, that you are mighty and powerful and you are a strong tower. You are the refuge. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. We spend so many hours, so many minutes every day with our eyes looking at what the world says, with our eyes looking at what the world sees, with our ears listening to what the world says. Lord, tonight, in this hour of power, in this Wednesday warfare, God, we want our mouths to declare the Lord God Almighty. We want our eyes to see the heavenly. We want to get a vision of who God is. Healer, restorer, redeemer, repairer. Oh God, you are a refuge. You are a refuge. Let your presence fall right now in the name of Jesus. Let his presence fall. Lift your hands. It's a symbol of saying, Lord, I want to receive the spirit of the sovereign Lord upon me. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. It's only an hour, people. It's only an hour. Right now, we've been 30 minutes. How many hours, how many minutes today have you looked and read and listened to something that was not God-centered? Maybe it was necessary, it was work, it was the computer, it was valuable to what you're doing in your place of influence, but right now, God is saying, get your eyes and your mind off the problems and the turmoil. Get your eyes on me, says the Lord. Get your heart on me, says the Lord. Don't look at the place. Don't think about the place. Don't fear the place. For I, the Lord, my, your God, am with you. My presence is with you. My power is with you, says the Lord. My love is with you. You're not alone. You are not unloved. You are not unlovely. You are not unlovable. God is with you. He is the God of love. And we thank him for that. Hallelujah. 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 As we've been praying, maybe the Lord has spoken something to you. Maybe there's a scripture that comes to your mind when you begin to say, Lord, I need you to come through. 
I need you to get remind me that I need to be tenacious in my prayer, that I am ready for victory and I am ready for the trumpet. And there's a scripture, there's a scripture that you say, you know what, the Lord has brought this to my mind, or maybe there's a thought. I want you to put that in the chat right now. I want you to declare it. You're declaring it for those who will watch now and those who will watch later. He is my Lord, he is my savior, he is my comforter, he's my truth, he's my peace, he's my soon coming king, he's my armor bearer. I am not alone. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise you, Jesus. You put that in the chat, what the Lord has been speaking to you, how we should serve him, how we should live for him, how we should commune with him, how we should trust him. That's what we read. So I want you to look at, I'm going to declare Psalm 34. It's Psalm 34, 1 through 11, verse 15 and verse 17 through 19. Psalm 34. I will extol the Lord at all times. Somebody say all times, all times. I will lift up the Lord at all times. When my bank account is low, I will lift up the Lord. When my body is weak, I will lift up the Lord. When I don't know where I'm going next, I will lift up the Lord. When I feel overwhelmed with stress, I will lift up the Lord. I will extol the Lord at all times, Psalm 34. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Listen to this. Let the afflicted. Thank you, Steve, for that verse in Psalm 9. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of the marvelous things you have done. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. You may have felt afflicted. You have may have felt insecure. You may have felt afflicted by fear and insecurity. You may have been afflicted by worry, but tonight the Lord has repeatedly said, do not fret, do not be anxious. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice, says the word of the Lord in Psalm 34. Glorify the Lord with me. Hallelujah, we glorify the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. God, your name is the name above of all names. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are a mighty Savior. Listen to what he said. I sought the Lord and he answered me. Yes, Moonby, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is Moonby shepherd. The Lord is Christine's shepherd. I sought the Lord and he answered Jennifer. He delivered me from all my fears. It says, those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him and he saved him out of all of his troubles. Wow. The Lord saves us from all our troubles. It doesn't mean we won't have troubles. In this world, you will have tribulation, John says. But be of good cheer, Jesus said, for I have overcome the world. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord will lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. I want to say something to you. Sometimes we want God to make us feel good and give us all these little good goosebumps, and, and we forget about the fear of the Lord, which is the ultimate respect of the Lord, the the that we fall down on our face before him, that we can say, it is not me, it is God. In Isaiah, in our book study on, on Thursday Connect, we are learning and hearing that God specifically allowed certain things to happen so that the children of God would know they did not do it. He did it. It was the power of God. It was the glory of God. It was the purpose of God to be revealed and so the Lord says here in Psalm 34, if you will fear the Lord and be a holy people, those who fear him will lack nothing. And I can tell you, there have been times when I didn't have food in the pantry and the Lord delivered just at the right time. There have been times when I didn't have very much money in the bank and the Lord delivered at the right time. There have been times 
when I heard the doctor say he's going to die, but I had the word of the Lord come and I did not lack confidence in God. I did not lack peace that God would come through. I didn't know the answer. I only knew God was in control, but it says those who seek me lack no good thing. And I can tell you, I was surrounded by the prayers of the righteous. Come, my children. This is what Psalm 34 says. Listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to your cry. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. Psalm 34, 15, 17, and 19. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them out of their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Father, right now, I, I know there are people that sometimes wear a mask that they're strong, but their heart is breaking for someone they love. Lord, we also know that we stand in the gap for those whose hearts have been broken and they don't know how to trust you. They haven't, they've forgotten how to speak the name of Jesus. But Lord, you decreed and declared in Psalm 34 that when the righteous cry out, you hear them and that you would be close to the brokenhearted. So together, we are the righteous crying out for the brokenhearted, that your Holy Spirit would descend on them like a comforting blanket and surround them with the love of God, surround them with the peace of God, that they would find refuge in the arms of God and that they would feel the presence of the Lord God Almighty in a way that says, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in Christ's glory. And God, it's not my way. It's not my place. It's not my address. It's not my work title. It's your name, God, above all else. It's your name, God, above all else. And so, Lord, as we near coming to a time when we are going to pray together, we're going to worship the Lord for a few minutes. I want you just to keep your mind on the Lord. I want you right where you are. You can hear my voice, but I want you to pray. I want to keep my voice a little soft so you can hear yourself pray. I want you to pray out loud if you can. It's a good thing to pray out loud. And when you're in church, when you're in a place where you can, in a Zoom call, whatever, where you can pray, let people hear you. One of the most precious things that ever happened to me was being able to hear my grandmother pray for me. I would walk in the hallway and I would hear her, oh God, be with my little Jennifer, even when I was old, even when I was a mother, even when I was already a Gigi, and I would hear grandma calling out my name, be with my little princess Jennifer, God, let her know your power, let her know your strength, let her know your peace. So right now, speak out loud to the Lord, and I want you to know that he is the Alpha and Omega, he is the beginning and the end, and he is everything in between. Don't don't you worry about the dash. Don't you worry about what's in the middle right now. He began you before you were in your mother's womb. He formed you. He has a purpose and a plan. And right now you are in the middle of that purpose. Don't run from God. Don't run from his purpose. Know that he is with you, that he will sustain you. He will reward you. He will deliver you from trouble. He is the Lord God. He is the Almighty. He is the Son of Man and the Son of God. He is the first and the last. He is the the living one. He is the witness. He is the creator. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the root of David and he's the lamb of God. He's the shepherd, the good shepherd. He's Christ. He's faithful and true. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords and the morning star. And those are just a few of the names in the book of Revelation. Revelation 311 says this, Jesus says, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown of life. And I want you to know tonight, the enemy would like to steal, kill, and destroy your faith, your courage, your tenacity, your perseverance. But the Lord has spoken to us tonight. He has reminded us that we will not see the righteous forsaken, that he is hearing the voices of the afflicted, that he will deliver us from all our fears and that those who look to him will be radiant. Can you do me a favor, right? Just look to God. Lord, we want your light to shine on us and to shine through us. 
God, we need your presence in our lives. We need your peace in our lives. Lord, I thank you for men and women of prayer and faith that are part of this online prayer meeting every week. I thank you for the ones who will watch later, for the courage of those in unspoken places, God, who have accepted your power and your love, and they've invited Jesus to be the center part of their lives, Lord God, even at the risk of losing their own life or losing those friendship connections. God, help us to remember that you said that if we would be a holy people, we would lack nothing, that even though some things would go wrong, that we would lack no good thing, and that the eyes of the Lord would be upon us, and your ears are attentive to our cry. We look to you right now, Lord God. We look to you right now. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. If you have children or friends or roommates, let them hear you say, I love you, God. I love you, Jesus. I love to hear when my husband says, oh, God, I love you. Oh, Jesus, I need you. Oh, Holy Spirit, you're powerful. That no weapon formed will prosper. God, that you will deliver us from our troubles. That you will be with us. You will not forsake us. Lord God, you, there is hope in the Lord. And we thank you, Lord God, that the salvation of the Lord comes to us and you help us and deliver us. We thank you for that in the name of Jesus. We thank you for that in the name of Jesus. If you have any other prayer requests or praise reports that you want to put in the chat right now, I want you to feel free to do that. I want to tell a testimony, a little bit of it, on behalf of my sister Christine. I know they were looking to get moved and transition and so some of that process has been done and we rejoice with our sister christine that that process is moving forward in the name of jesus and we ask you lord that you would complete the process god there are those who have things they need to sell whatever it may be a house it may be a car it may be um something else but lord you're going to provide you're going to bring the exact right thing and so lord we thank you we thank you that you're going to provide. Lord, we thank you that each one of us is valuable to you, that you have not forgotten our name, that we are not sitting on the sidelines. I want you to know that you are not sitting on the sidelines. You are valuable to God. I think one of the biggest tools of the enemy right now is to make us feel like whatever we're doing is not valuable to the kingdom of God. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The Bible clearly says, that we will be the righteous. Amen. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and God delivers us. And it says it over and over and over that the righteous will not be forsaken, that we can hope in the Lord and the salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is that stronghold. So no matter what happens, no matter what happens with extended lockdowns in the north of Italy or in the south of Italy, no matter what happens with sickness or disease. I want us to, um, as we close up this time in prayer, I'm going to ask you again to pray for our pastor father, Pastor Rick, that um, the Lord would be with him and his family, that the Lord would continue to heal all the symptoms of pancreatic cancer, all the ripple effect of pancreatic cancer. So Lord, we curse cancer together in the name of Jesus. I thank you that Joan Pasquale will have a strong lining in her stomach. I thank you that the things that are saying they will cause pain, that all the symptoms will be diminished and depleted in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that her nutrients will continue to manifest healing and health in her body. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for his love and compassion for others. We thank you, God, that you are with him and you are giving him wisdom from on high. So Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that you would be with. If you have a pastor in your city, I want you to, we pray for pastors right now. I know Christine is on here and she's a pastor. Her husband is a pastor. Lord, we pray for pastors. We pray for leaders, spiritual leaders, God, that they would not be weary in well-doing. Thank you, Lord, that by your stripes we are healed. Thank you that we took that communion this week to remember what you've done on the cross for us. So, Lord, we lift up churches in Italy and in Europe and around the world, in South Africa and in America. 
God, we stand together with our churches that we would rise up and call the Lord blessed, that we would promote Jesus, that we would promote the peace of God, not the peace of mankind. It's a different thing. The Lord wants mankind to have peace, but it is the peace of God which passes understanding. Remember, it's not a place, it's a person. So Lord, we pray for these pastors. Lord, I also pray for all the aspects of ministry. Lord, I thank you that you have truly made us ready. You have made us ready. And so also right now, we have a couple minutes. We have a couple, David and Autumn, that are waiting on a visa. They'll be the first ones to come in in a whole year since COVID hit. Will you pray for David and Autumn right now that their visa will come through? They've got their plane ticket. They've got their, everything is packed and ready to go. And they should depart America next Tuesday, but they need their visas. Yes, Sandra, we're praying for you. And I want us to pray, God, release that visa from the Italian consulate. Let it go to David and Autumn. Let them arrive to help children and families here in Rome. Let them um, come, Lord God, to serve you faithfully as you have called them. Lord, we know that COVID does not stop the call of God. COVID does not stop the victory of Jesus Christ. COVID does not quash our courage in God Almighty. COVID is no match for the power of the Holy Spirit. So, yes. Yes, Lord, we're ready. I'm ready, God, from head to toe, ready to raise a God song. I'm ready, God, so ready, ready from head to toe, ready to sing, ready to raise a God song. In the name of Jesus, we are going to see doors open, opportunities open, and coming to the children of God. As you give God the first fruits of your time, your talents, and your treasures. Listen to me. This is still the beginning of the year. And many of you have said, Lord, I'm doing this. I'm I'm donating my time and energy. I want you to know the Lord is going to bless you back with time. He's Whatever time you thought it would take you to do a project or a job, you're going to be amazed. The Lord is going to minimize that because you have given the first fruit of your time and he's going to multiply the harvest of time. You've given the first fruit of your talents and he's going to multiply and use your talents somewhere else. He's, you're given the first fruits of your treasures and the Lord is going to multiply that like he did for my dear sister. Something that should have come to her in October, November of 2020 has come to her in March of 2021 because we decreed and declared that God, you said if we would ask, you would give it. If we would seek, we would find. And if we would knock, the door would be open. And so Lord, we glory in your name. We glory in the name of the Lord, and we thank you that you are going to release David and Autumn's visa, and you are going to allow them to come and be a part of ICF Rome right here in Italy. We thank you that you're going to help them with that. So, Lord, we stand upon our scripture so far for, for 2021. In January, we said we would be ready for worship, and that's our Psalm 108.1. In February, we decreed that we would be ready for victory. Remember, Pastor Rick said it's a process, and I said it's a mindset. Victory is a mindset. 1 John 5, 4 says, everyone born of God, everyone. Somebody type that in. Everyone. You are not left out. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Amen? And in March now, we are in Luke 12, 40. It says, you must also be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. We want to be ready for the trumpet, but the Lord said, I want you to get your house in order. I want you to work and serve me while you still have time. I want you to be ready and doing what God has for you. Everyone, everyone, everyone. God, we thank you. I want to encourage you, go back and read these verses that people have put in here. I want you to look at these verses. I want you to read them. I want you to go to Revelation chapter 3. I want you to go to Revelation 21 and 22. I want you to go to Psalm 34 and Psalm 37. And I want you to begin to memorize the word of God. I want you to raise your weapons. 
Raise your weapons. These are our weapons of worship. And worship is our warfare. This is how we fight our battles. Amen. This is how I fight my battles by worshiping the Lord and blessing the Lord and declaring that God has given me strength for the day and that no weapon formed will prosper. We will memorize it. We will declare it. We will apply it to our lives. You can't just speak it. You got to live it. And you will benefit from it when you do that. And then we share it. So I encourage you, even when this prayer time is over, share this video onto your page. Share it. Go up in that little bar where it has the, the whole web address. Hit copy and paste. Send it in a WhatsApp message to somebody. You need to watch this prayer. Remember that God is for you. God is for you. God is for you and he is with you. And so, Lord, we close this as Pastor Rick always encourages us. Can you say thank you, Jesus? Can you say thank you, Lord? Father, we thank you. You have given us an attitude of gratitude. We thank you for being with your people. We thank you, Lord God, that you are with us. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. God, I pray that your presence would surround your precious sons and daughters right now. You know where they are. You know the circumstances. You know the things that weigh heavy on their heart. You know the things that weigh heavy on their mind. Lord God, you said that you would hear the prayers of the afflicted and you would deliver them from their troubles. So Lord, I pray and I thank you, Lord God, that you are fulfilling your promises to your children as we walk with you, as we walk in holy living, as we seek your face, Lord God, not the face of the world, but we seek God's face, not the presence of our peers and our friends, but we seek the presence of the Holy Spirit. God, descend in that room right now. You know, my friends, if I was with you, I'd be holding your hand. I'd be putting my hands as where two or three agree is touching anything. It would be done in Jesus' name. It's done. You've been asking God to help you. It's done. Now you need to thank God. You need to say, Lord, I'm your child. I thank you that it's done. I thank you that it's done. I thank you that it's done in Jesus' name. I thank you that the promised land is done in Jesus' name. I'm going to walk in the blessing and the presence of the person of God the Father, of the person of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Our brother Bose just said, thank you, Jesus. Bose is graduating with his master's next week. We praise God. That's one of those university students we prayed for numerous times. We have another one who's graduating on March 30th because we prayed that God would help them in their, in their exams. Thank you, Lord. It's done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my story. Thank you that my story reminds me that I'm not alone, that God is faithful, and he is with us. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for our story. God bless you. I love you. I hope to see you, those who can, on Thursday Connect at noon. We've only got about three more, and we'll finish our book, and then we'll do a couple new things, and then we will start a new book soon, Thursday Connect. If you have not registered, you need to register online. There's an activity for teenagers on Saturday, um, they're sponsors for their pizza, so if they don't have the pizza money, we've got sponsors for that. Uh, but you need to register so they can make a reservation for tables of four at the pizza place. You need to register for online prayer. There is a, you want to get involved, there's a hosting team meeting. There is a kids workers meeting coming up in these next couple weeks. And I need you to be there on Sunday because I am so excited. I have got a message about being ready for the trumpet. I love you, and I know you're going to have an amazing day. And we just stand in awe of how awesome God is in our lives. Amen. I, I bless you in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sleep in peace. Fret not. Do not be anxious. For the Lord your God is with you. In Jesus' name. Amen.